Hey everybody, it's Mr. Carr again. Today we're gonna to finish up unit three with three C, story graphs, okay? So along with our functions, we wanna discuss what some other properties of them is what we're gonna look at, okay? So a little bit more vocabulary. The first thing is a discrete function. So that is a function that consists of point, whoops, hello, points that are not connected. Okay, so very roughly speaking, you're looking at something like this. As long as it's a function, it follows the other patterns of it, but it's just points on a graph. There are no connections here. A continuous function is a function graphed with, I'm gonna change that with a uh, connected Anna with a single line or curve. So it looks something kind of like this, okay? So there's no breaks in there. It's just a single line that keeps going, okay? Another thing we want to talk about is independent. And this is, well, let's just come down here. I don't know why it's on that spot first. So let's come down to independent variable and dependent variable, okay? So independent variable, the variable that determines the, sorry, I've been looking at it this way. Basically, the values of an independent variable are the inputs. So the variable that determines the, mm, I'm gonna say determines the function. And what that means is like, those are the numbers that are gonna be plugged in to the inputs, okay? Mm -hmm. So these are the values that we're gonna count out and then put it into the function to come up with your output. The dependent variable is a variable which is determined by the independent. It depends on the independent, independent variable. These are the values that are the outputs. So independent are inputs, dependent are outputs. So one thing we can always say is dependent, deep, dependent depends on independent. Something else I'm gonna to add to that is this, okay? Dependent, is a function of the independent, okay? So that's what we're gonna look at too, because since outputs are a function of the inputs. So let's identify that real quick here. So identify the, the independent dependent variable in each scenario. The air pressure inside a tire increases with the temperature, okay? So the air pressure, I would say this is the air pressure is depending on the temperature. The temperature goes up, the tire, the air pressure also increases. So the temperature is my independent and the tire pressure is the dependent variable. Okay, so I'm gonna use that to help with this too. I'm gonna to make this statement go one step further and say temperature is a function. Sorry, I had that wrong. Dependent goes here, okay? Tire pressure is a function of temperature, okay? Generally, the average price of going to the movies has steadily increased over time. So we're looking at time and movie ticket price. So as time goes on, the movie prices, the movie prices go up. That means that movie prices are the dependent, it depends on the time. Depend, oops, I an extra D in there. Depend, dependent, geez. And time is independent. And if I take it one step further, I would say that the price is a function of time. Okay, so a couple of quick definitions there. Next thing we wanna talk about was called increasing and decreasing intervals on a graph. Real quick, when we look at our graphs, we look at this idea. We're looking at, uh, we're always gonna read it from left to right, okay? So when we look at this, there's three possibilities that our graph can do. And this is for continuous graphs or another one called piecewise, but we're not gonna worry about that. Increasing, so as X increases, f of x increases. So what that means is as I go from left to right, 
the graph is going up. So it looks kind of like this. Now it doesn't have to be a straight line. It could be something like a curve too, okay? But bottom line, that's our definition of increasing. Decreasing as X increases, F of X decreases, okay? So as X increases, that's still going left to right, but my F of X is going down. So that can go down and to the right as a straight line. It could go on a curve like that, doesn't matter. Constant, as X increases, f of x remains the same, remains the same or remains constant. This is just a horizontal line and it's always gonna be a horizontal line, okay? So it's not going to change, it's not going up or down, it's just horizontal. So we can do this by showing it on here. So, okay, so we have a few different options here. I'm gonna go ahead and pause for just a second. Ah, sorry about that, I had to change locations, okay. So we are focusing on increasing and decreasing intervals. So we look at two graphs right here. One thing that I'm going to you notice is that I am not increasing or decreasing always. So like sometimes a graph can be always increasing. It would just go like this. Sometimes a graph is always decreasing. Looks like this. This first example, we have a bunch of things going on. Let's start with increasing. The only time it's increasing is going kind of up and to the right. It's got like, like the definition, as X increases, F of X increases. That only happens here. This is the spot that it's increasing, okay? It's decreasing, as X increases, F of X decreases, it goes down, that's only doing it here. That's my decreasing, okay? And then the last one was uh, constant. It actually does it twice, does it here, and here, so both of these are constant intervals. Okay, so it's the it's horizontal lines is what creates constant. So I'm going to label these in terms of X. When we label our increasing or decreasing or constant intervals, it's always in terms of X. So increasing starts here and ends here. The X values are four to eight. So that's what I would write is four comma eight. It looks like it's a coordinate pair, but it's not. It's not four to eight, like on an X and Y. It's going from four to eight is when it's increasing like this. It's decreasing here to here. So in the X direction, it is two to four. So we write it this way. It's constant in two spots. Um, I'm not exact. So I don't like this one, but we're gonna go ahead and assume one thing. We're gonna assume that these are gonna go on forever, okay? So one that does that, here's what's happening. The first constant interval is this one right here. Well, if it goes on forever to the left, what that means is that's gonna go all the way to a negative infinity to the left. It's constant until the number two. And again, these are in terms of X. The other one, it starts at eight right here and goes forever that way. So that's gonna go on for infinity, okay? So we got negative infinity up to two, eight to a positive infinity, okay? And again, these are always left to right. You notice how the lower numbers are to the left in every case, okay? In the second graph, this one's a little bit different. We don't actually have any constants. So there's no constant intervals. There's none there. Okay, but my graph is doing some interesting things because if you look at this, this is decreasing to that point. That's my decreasing there. Then it turns around at that exact moment and now it's increasing. Okay, so again, the definition is as it goes, we always read it left to right. So this is going down for f of x, this is going up. So that's what creates our increasing and decreasing intervals. So that means if I start with my increasing, it's four is that turnaround point, that X value of four. I don't care about the Y values, I care about the X. So it's increasing from four to a positive infinity because it's just gonna keep going forever. The decreasing starts way to the left at a negative infinity and then turns around at four. Okay, so again, everything's in terms of X. 
that's our increasing, decreasing, and constant intervals. Okay. So for our last example, example three here, we're gonna go through a bunch of different things here. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna tie it back to some of the other things we covered in this unit. Tom skateboards all around town. He was at home and decided he wanted to skateboard to the park and back. The following graph represents Tom's journey to the park and back home. Okay, so look what we're comparing. We're comparing distance and time. Okay, the reasonable, I like this word, reasonable domain and range. When we look at this, what's reasonable has to deal with real life. We, if we look at the domain, that is going in the x direction. So we're looking all the way here, left and right. But we don't care about all those numbers because of a couple of things. First of all, this is all negative x, which means that's negative time. Tom here is not time traveling, okay? Tom is staying in real life. So he cannot go to a negative number, all right? He also is not gonna go beyond this number in the x direction because he's going back home. We're just representing his, his uh, kind of his little journey there. He travels to the place, uh, let's see, we, was it? he was at home, goes to the skate park, wanted to skateboard to the park and then back. So he went to skateboard, uh, skateboarded to the park, did some more skateboarding around and then came back home. That's the scenario. So we're telling that story. So we wanna be, tell things in uh, uh, the exact number here. So, oh, just realized that that froze up. So that should fix it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so yeah, like I said, we don't care about this time. We don't care about this time. So we are going to do, for domain, we're gonna do what's called interval notation. Interval notation is going to be a little bit different than our, the kind of our set notation here. In the X direction, it starts at zero. So we're gonna go from zero, just like my intervals with increasing, decreasing, that's gonna represent the X values here. It ends, I don't know, it goes not quite 65, so let's say 62. We're kind of estimating here. We'll say 62, okay? We're gonna use what's called brackets on both of these. The reason we use brackets is because the brackets are telling us we're including these numbers, okay? So brackets like this means include the numbers. There's another possibility if I do parentheses, that means we are not including. So we're excluding the values, okay? Now, another way you can write this, and maybe this is the way you've probably seen in the past, or we'll probably stick with this in this class, is you do set notation. We start with this. Um, I don't have variables, so I'm just going to go with x because that's domain here. x is an element of the reals such that 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 62. Okay, that is my domain as a uh, set notation. So two methods here. There's interval and then there's set. Okay, so that's interval and set. So this is just saying all the X values from zero to 62. This is saying all real numbers, as long as the values are zero to 62. And we'll probably go over this more in depth if we need to. Range is gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna go in the Y direction, okay? In the y direction, we're focusing on, again, real life here. We're not gonna do negative here because that's a negative distance. I don't know how you represent negative distance from home. I guess you went somewhere, you came back and they kept going past. So we don't care about negatives in the y direction, okay? And we also kind of care about the maximum point here. So we're gonna, it looks pretty close to that. So we're gonna say that that is 3.5. So that's the furthest that Tom gets from home. So for that range, we're gonna start at zero is the lowest. The furthest it goes is 3.5. That's the farthest that Tom goes. And again, we're including both of these values. The other possibility is if I do this, y element of the reals such that zero less than or equal to y less than or equal to 3.5, okay? All right, so a couple other things to, in, uh, discuss with this is just uh, talking about what some of these points mean. So what does the point 10 to mean? So 10 to, we're interpreting what X and Y are in, for this graph. 10 is time, two is miles. 
So at 10 minutes, uh, Tom is two miles from home. Approximately how long does it take Tom to get back home round trip? That's right here. Okay, that's our real life meaning there. So approximately 62 minutes. I'm basing that on what I estimated earlier. Label on the graph where the park is. Approximately how long does it take time to get there? That's a weird one, I'll be honest. I think it looks like this is where, to me, when I read this, the park is this spot, okay? Because I'm reading that Tom is skateboarding away from home. He gets somewhere, and I don't think this is accurate, but we're going to pretend that he's still skateboarding away from home while he's at the park, but he's doing it at a slower pace. He's not trying to go straight somewhere away from home. He's getting there and he's just riding along somewhere else. Then this is his return home. Like this is going somewhere and then this is going home. Okay. So this has got to be the time of the park. So approximately how long does it take time to get there? He gets there in, it uh, looks like just over 10 minutes. So we'll say, we'll say 12 minutes. Okay, so this is his park time. All right, so that's it. We're just interpreting some other things. Some other things we might ask about is how long is he at the park? He's there from like 12 minutes to here, which is about 40 minutes. So he's there for close to 30 minutes, things like that. Okay, all right. So that is 3C, talking about story graphs. That's it for our unit three. Um, we will continue on reviewing this and that's it. Take care, everybody.